We now proceed to the seven habits as used in the CSE classroom. A number of changes were made with classroom physical appearance down to classroom management. The use of the habits are applied with the use of terminologies as part of the activities. A common language is therefore being worked on. Activities will be discussed according to habit. Habit number one. Activities allow children to exercise leadership. For example, a little, little teacher is assigned daily to do routine tasks. Moreover, children are given the freedom to choose a task through the leader's chart in some classes. The most proactive group is awarded. Artwork displays are more evident inside the classroom. There are also classroom activities that showcase the abilities and skills of the students. This is an example of an artwork display. The varying leaders, char leaders charts in different levels. The most proactive group is being recognized. And the definition of a leader is posted in the classroom. Habit number two, begin with an end in mind. The integration of the habit is done through the presentation of schedule, which is done in such a way wherein some may be flexible in nature. Teachers also involve the children in deciding on the menu that they want in class activities. Scheduling of activities are labeled with begin with an end in mind. This is an example of a flexible or sometimes negotiable scheduling. Habit number three. In first step, snack time and play time are done after the work time or the concept of work first then play. Children are made to experience to prioritize the activities that they do. They pack away materials or line up first before they proceed to another activity. This is an example of how they pack away placemats or their grooming boxes. A lot of seven habits language are incorporated in CSE's activities. Habit force translation to classroom instruction is by giving each class a fair chance to play at the different play areas of the school. Games are introduced that enable them to practice the habit and using the language of think win win in place of playing fair. Moreover, children are encouraged to think of a third alternative when both parties want to do different things. The sports fest is an example of games that allow them to exercise habit number four. Habit number five's most extensive application in the classroom is the talking stick. Children are encouraged to listen to one another and the one holding the talking stick is the only one allowed to express oneself for the moment. The artwork displays are also ways of celebrating differences as each one is appreciated for one's own unique artistic skills. The next picture illustrates the talking stick in action. Celebrating differences of artworks are done through the display of them in the classrooms. Again, the use of common language, let's synergize, is often encouraged in the classroom before any group activity. The curriculum generated activities that give children opportunities to be with others and to work with them. Tasks are also distributed equally among groups to complete the day's tasks. Finally, teachers include the recitations of habits to review. This practice enables the children to think that things are better accomplished when each perform their own tasks and that that is the way to synergize. An example of group work where children shout, let's synergize. An illustration of task distribution and reading of the seven habits tasks. Class group work in action is done like this.
The seventh habit also encourages the use of language. Sharpen the soul or balance feels best during activities. Activities are often made sure that they are fun for the children. Finally, curriculum generated activities like the book day, araw ng wika, sports fests, Christmas celebration, all enhance the balance feels best idea. Expressing oneself through activities such as fashion show. Participation in activities such as book day celebration or the water play wherein they are allowed to have fun and learn at the same time and the very much awaited performance at the annual play. It is their chance to showcase their talents in front of, in front of their parents and people they love. The CSC is still in the process of fully integrating the seven habits into its curriculum. With this, areas are still being organized to be able to integrate the seven habits into the CSE's way of life. It was commonly stressed during the discussions done on the teachers among the different levels. The Leader in Me program is relatively new. Although it is originally designed in such a way that it is not another job that teachers do, it does not meet this goal. The process involves a paradigm shift that needs to be comprehensively understood by all those who are involved. It is therefore necessary to have a refresher's training among all those who are accountable. It is also important that a review and monitoring of the program can be done on a more systematic process. This can be further done through consultation with the experts or those who have successfully integrated the program into their school system. It is also necessary that new employees, especially the new teachers, be given the training since they are already part of the accountables. It is also important to continue the program at home. Dissemination is very important for consistency. Children spend more time at home, so it is just right that pe people they are with will be involved in the learning process. This can come in bulletins, letters, or asking them to be parent guests to promote the habits. This will be also a way for them to get to know the habits even more. A very important consideration to look into are the materials allotted for the integration of the program. Since it is relatively new, teachers are still in the process of making materials that aid the integration of the habits. It is therefore important to allocate budget for this purpose. Teaching the habits rely heavily on books. Since the program is based on Western culture books, for example, use characters and situations that Filipino children could not really relate to. It is therefore recommended to come up with own set of books that are more culture fit to students of CSE and the Filipino children. Finally, on the curriculum, it is very important to allot more days for integration of the program into existing curriculum. Make stories that are more appropriate for the CSC students. There is a difficulty in bringing down the principles to the younger levels such as the nursery and the first step. It is therefore very important again to consult with the experiences of others who have successfully integrated them to the younger groups. The seven habits in CSC is a work in progress. But what is important is that efforts are being done to be able to fully integrate the program to the existing one. Thank you very much. And this is Joan Trina Moreno Javier, a proud teacher from the Child Studies Center, Miriam College, Philippines. Mabuhay!